All right, 2.2, length of a line segment. The length of a line segment, D, can be calculated using rise and run, where D is equal to the following, and that's when you know the slope, or using two points, D equals the following equation, and that's when you know two points. Now, something to note that's really important here, folks. This one is a really, really tricky formula. It can only be used when you know that the rise and the run have not been simplified. That's the problem, is with slope, it could be any possible combination of values. So when you reduce rise and run, it will actually affect the distance as well. So really, I don't necessarily like this formula. It is not used, let's say, um, it's not a good representation. It's an okay one that only works some of the time. Whereas this formula here, using two points, so for example, an A and a B point, where one point is called X1 and Y1, and B is called X2 and Y2. So you have X1, Y1, X2, Y2, and you just plug it into the formula. So what I'm going to show you in the examples here is how we use this formula. This formula, folks, is the best one to use. I highly recommend it, and it's the one that you should know how to do. So we're going to focus on using this formula and not this one. Again, like I said, this one has its trickiness, whereas this one works 100% of the time. So let's look at the first example. You asked to find the distance from P to the origin. What does this word mean? We have a point, which we can recognize, but what does this word mean? Where is it found? What, what do we see when we see the word origin? Well, let's look at an example on a, uh, in a grid such as this. In this grid that you see here, where would you think would be the origin? Origin, hopefully you're thinking of like original, where are your origins from, so the beginning, where would that be on a grid system like this on the Cartesian plane? Hopefully you're thinking, oh, I think it probably is right here, and that's exactly where it's going to be, right here. What are the coordinates? Well, the coordinates for the origin are 0, 0. So I think of origin begins with O. Uh-oh, we begin at 0, 0. So think of uh-oh as the coordinates 0, 0. Now, we want to find the distance from P to O. So I write D for distance, and you could use L as well, L meaning the length, all right, from P to O. So I write PO as a subscript just to say, so that in case, for example, you have examples where you have to find more than one distance, you can do the distance from P to O, and, and then you could do the distance from, let's say, two other points. We're going to have examples where we have to do the distance formula quite a few times. So you want to be able to identify which distance you're doing. Now you could write this in words, or obviously we want to do it the shorter way, and we say D from P to O. We use the formula. Now, remember what the formula was. It had two sets of brackets and a square and we add them together. Remember that? Now, what do we put inside? Well, we go from P to O. So why don't we stick the P point inside? So P has the coordinates 3, so the X goes in 1, the Y goes in the other, 3, negative 5, X goes in 1, Y goes in the other, and you do the same for the 0, 0. You put X in one, of the one with the X, and then you put the y in with the y. And you're always subtracting the values. So that's important to notice. You're always subtracting them. And then you find the value. Now, what are we actually doing? Let's look at a grid. 3, negative 5 can be found in the fourth quadrant. So this is where p is found. And we want to find the distance from p to o. How are we doing that? Well, to find this length, folks, we have to go up 5 and back 3, or if you want to start from the origin to get to P, you go over 3 and down 5. 
So the goal is is to use Pythagorean theorem to find the value of this distance right here. So here we go. We find out that it's 3 squared plus negative 5 all squared. And note that there are brackets around here. Why are there brackets? Because if you don't type the brackets in in some of your calculators, your calculator will give you a negative answer for this question. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's not a negative. The reason why is the whole thing gets squared, so so does the negative. A negative negative makes positive. So what we're going to have here is 3 squared is going to equal 9 plus 5, negative 5 squared, which equals 25. So you should know how to do this in your heads, but if you don't, use the calculator. But I'm telling you guys, you should know how to be able to do this. So 9 plus 25 gives you root 34. Now some of you, your calculators are saying, well, I can do the square root of 9 and then the square root of 25 and I get the same answer. Wrong, folks. You can't do that. What you need to note is that what we're trying to do is find the inside of this before we apply this, this root symbol. Think of it this way as bed mass. Inside the root sign is more important than applying the root sign. So we have to do the inside first and then if we can apply the root sign to make it simpler. In this case we can't make it simpler because 34 is not a perfect square. So we can't find the exact square root of that. Now some of you are going, well I can just type it in. When you type it in your calculator, it's only for questions where you're required to give a final answer. This, mathematically, is the correct answer, and you do not need to go any further than this. All right, and that, folks, is the end of example number one. Let's look at example number oh, two. Find the length of the line segment between A and B. So two coordinates, this time neither are at the origin, and you're to find the length. Well, length is the same as distance, folks. So you're still finding the distance, but from A to B. Now you could use a D, or you could, if I erase this, use an L. The length of A to B, or the distance from A to B, means the exact same concept. You use the same formula. Square roots, bunch of brackets and squares. Now let's look at how slowly we can do this again. You put A first, so we make sure we have the squares and the brackets. A first, so negative 1 in the one bracket, 0 in the other. Then we subtract 5 in the first one, 2 in the second one. We're subtracting them both, so we're using A first, then B for X, A first for Y, then b for y, so and we put them in two separate brackets. Put it together. Now what am I looking for? I'm looking for this solution here. I need to see negative 6 all squared plus negative 2 all squared. Next step that I'm looking for to get full marks is to be able to show me the process. You don't need to give me the individual ones like we did in the last example. You don't need to give me this 9 plus 25. To be honest, folks, you can go straight to the answer, which would be root 40. So again, you don't need this answer whatsoever. It's optional. It is okay to have it. So we're going to put a little, a little sort of cloud here saying you can have it as an option. It's not a bad idea, but if you don't have it, you're not going to lose any marks either. All right, let's move on to another example. Example number three. A triangle has vertices at A, B, and C. Classify the triangle. So, what does it mean? Classify the triangle. You need to look at this question and say to yourself, what is it asking me to do? How am I going to do this? What do you think I need to look at? What might be the reasons I need to look at that? Well, you need to think of what kind of triangles there are. There are triangles where all three sides are different, also known as scalene. Two, there are two sides that are equal, and that's isosceles. And three would be if all three sides are the same, and that would be equilateral. How can we classify a triangle based on those ideas? And, guys, there's one more way triangles can be classified. 
Does anyone know what that is? That's right. It is right triangles. How can you classify a triangle that is right? Well, looking at the coordinates, we have A, B, and C. We're going to classify this triangle. First thing we need to do, well, that's right, you see it right there. We need to be able to find all the different lengths. Now notice the sketch that I did is not accurate, nor will any sketch be considered accurate. But it's worth it for you to draw it out to give you a visual representation of what we're looking for. To classify a triangle, we need to know the lengths of all three sides, especially when we're given the vertices. So we do the following. Distance from A to B. Okay, we find the equa plug it into the equation, find the distance, and we find it's root 10, the distance from B to C. Now, I, hopefully I don't need to go through this with you, but A, we plug in the A coordinate. B, we plug in the B coordinate. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3 squared. Negative 1 minus 0 is negative 1 squared. Negative 3 squared is 9, plus 1, negative 1 squared is 1, 9 plus 1 is root 10. We do the same for BC. As such, folks, that's right. We plug it in, and we find the length of AB and BC. Ooh, no, something very interesting. So it's isosceles, maybe, or it could be scalene, I mean equilateral. We know it's not scalene. So, the last one is distance from A to C, and we find out that that is equal to root 20. Now, look at this check that's popping up. What do you think we're checking here? Hmm. How can lengths of a triangle identify if it's a right angle triangle as well as whether it's isosceles scaling or equilateral. Note that only isosceles and scalene triangles can be considered right angle triangles as well. How do we check using the sides what a right triangle, how, whether a right triangle exists or not? Think about it. Hmm. Well, folks, sides in right triangles have a special relationship, and that is the Pythagorean Theorem. If I check the Pythagorean Theorem inside this particular problem, so a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and I plug in the two small sides, and I square them and add them together, does it equal the right side, which is the larger side? Note something interesting. The right angle always points to the hypotenuse, always points to the largest side. That is something always unique about a right angle. The right angle, the actual mark, points to the longest side, the hypotenuse. That is true. It doesn't matter how I draw that triangle. So I'm just going to show you an example. If I twist this triangle around, you should be able to pick out the hypotenuse no trouble at all. So let's try let's try and snatch this triangle and see what we can do with this triangle to make it move for us, okay? Let's do some neat little tricks with it. We're going to move them. And it doesn't matter. No, look at that right angle. He's always pointing to where that hypotenuse is. It doesn't matter how I draw it. Upside down, sideways, all of those things. Something neat to note. Well, once I plug it in, look folks, left side equals right side, and we find out that yes, it is a right isosceles triangle. This is true because AB equals BC, and AB is perpendicular to BC. All right folks, on to the next video. See you on the other side.